<laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Samsung Liang is currently an associate professor at the School of Computer Science, Sun Yat-sen University in China. He received the PhD degree from the University of Amsterdam, the Netherlands, in 2014, supervised by Professor uh, Martin, uh, who is an uh, academician uh, of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Science in the fields of computer science. Uh, Samsung Liang's research interest lies in the field of information retrieval, data mining, artificial intelligence, and deep learning. He has published over 60 peer-reviewed papers, most of which are in top-tier venues such as CIR, KDD, Neurops, TKD, and TOIS. He is also an editor, uh, so editorial member of the Information Process and Management Journal since 2016 and the Young Associate Editor-in-Chief for the Journal of Computer Science and Technology since 2021. He has also been PC member and reviewer in a number of top machine learning conference and journals such as CIR, KDD, Neurops, ICML, WWHKI, and other major machine learning conference and, and journals. He received various awards honors such as the CIR 2017 Outstanding Reviewer Award, Outstanding Contribution to the Instruction is for instructing data mining courses for the international petroleum engineers, the King Kingdom of Saudi Arabia session. Today, he's going to talk about networks, their embedding and applications. Let's welcome uh, Dr. Samsung Liao. And now uh, it's the floor is yours. Samsung, you can present. Thanks for the introduction. You can share your slides. Yeah, great. I can see your slides. And thanks for the introductions. I'm, I'm very happy to be invited to give the seminars at the university. The topic of my uh, seminar is nervous, the embeddings and applications. And here is the agenda of my seminar and covers uh, four aspects. One is uh, uh, different categories of networks, and then we move to uh, the embedding algorithms and their applications, and then we conclude the seminar. So let's move to the first uh, uh, part of our agenda. And nowadays, um, an increasing number of people uh, do shopping online. For instance, they go to Amazon to buy some stuff, and some people uh, use uh, Facebook to uh, communicate with each other. And some, sometimes uh, people also use uh, Twitter to post some news online. And if you have some questions, and for instance, you read some book, you have some questions, you don't under understand some stuff, you can go to the Wikipedia to search uh, the useful information. And all of these data actually are not uh, uh, independence to each other. They are dependent each to each other, actually. So uh, the data, actually, they have structures. They have structures. And for instance, we have, so um, we have uh, uh, different categories of networks. And one, in, one of them is the NDLX network. In this category of network, uh, we have uh, two nodes, and they have a link. And, but we don't have the deletions from one, one node to another. We just have the connection. We just have the link. And another kind of uh, network is a deluxe network. Here, the difference, uh, uh, the difference is uh, we have two nodes and we have the deletions from one node to, an, to another. We have the deletions. And also, uh, when uh, for some data, we have the uh, structure, we have the hierarchical structures. And on the very top of the network, we only have one node, but when we go down from the top to the bottom, we have more nodes. And that kind of network, we call it hierarchical network. And sometimes we have the knowledge graph. Um, uh, in the knowledge graph, we two uh, nodes share the uh, link. Uh, the link has some information, and we have different kinds of link. Uh, sometimes we call it relationship, relationship. So we have uh, two uh, different categories of entities. One is the nodes, another is the relationship between the nodes. That is the knowledge graph. 
So we have usually uh, in the new work, usually we have four uh, different categories of networks. Uh, uh, they are in the and direct network, direct network, hierarchical network, and knowledge graph. But more importantly, sometimes uh, the network, the networks are not static. Instead, they are dynamic. That means um, a couple of things, such as um, the structure of the network will change from time to time. Uh, for instance, at time stamp run, um, we have these structures. But as time move forward, we have more nodes add into the network, and the uh, the link will will dis some link will disappear, and uh, some some link will uh, disappear because uh, they don't have any connection anymore, and the attribute of some nodes will will change from time to time as well. For instance, um, some people they go online shopping and they then their interest will change from time to time. In last months. He would like to uh, pur he he purchase some stuff like basketball, but this month he would like to purchase some books. That means um the attribute of the nodes will change from time to time. So we have so we also have the dynamic networks. The networks are dynamic but not static, and so we have uh, a number of categories of network: and direct network, direct network, hierarchical network, knowledge graph and the dynamic version of these networks. And because of this, um, we have a number of challenges. And in information, in information retrieval and data mining, we have a number of tasks and we need to um, uh, analyze the data. The data are associated with networks. So one important algorithm is uh, network embedding. The goal of network embedding is to um, to map the entity in the networks into uh, vectors. Uh, for instance, here I have a figures from the left to the right. We have on the left hand side, we have a graph, and then we need to map the, the entity. Entity means uh, nodes or also the relationship or uh, some or the attributes of the networks. We need to uh, map the entities, entity in the networks into the vectors such that the semantic distance between between uh, the nodes between uh, the, the the nodes can be a uh, method. So we have a number of challenges. And um, nowadays there are there are many uh, embedding algorithms has been proposed, but there are still some embed uh, challenges there. One is um, most of the embeddings in, uh, algorithms are uh, static. They uh, try to understand the static network. But sometimes um, uh, our tasks, our, our data are dynamic. So can we uh, improve the, the, the static network embedding algorithms to deal with the dynamic networks? That is one of the challenging. Another challenging is um, sometimes, um, uh, and nowadays uh, most uh, embedding algorithms suppose the data are distributed in Euclidean distribution space. That assumption is very really strong. So, um, but some in some tasks, the data will not distribute in this space. So, what kinds of space should we model the data? For uh, sometimes, for instance, in a hierarchical um, network, some people model the data into a um, hyperbolic space, but not the Euclidean space. So, what kind of space should we model the data into? That is uh, one of the challenges. And we also have another challenge that is um, in most uh, uh, graph neural network algorithms, and they suppose uh, they directly um, uh, use the original features. That is not good because um, sometimes we need to uh, uh, map the feature into another space by a kernel function. And then the choice of the kernel function is of great importance to the success of applying the embedding algorithm to the task. So what kinds of networks? The network function will play a very important role in embed the entities of the networks to the space. So we need to consider uh, the, the kernel functions. Uh, another uh, challenge in, in uh, embedding uh, in graph neural network embedding is uh, 
the, the structures of the network. Sometimes they are not, they are not a direct uh, network or indirect network, but they are a high uh, network. So um, how can we deal with such network? It's challenging. Sometimes the high electrical network is also a dynamic. So how can we deal with such networks? And, and in some tasks, uh, the, the data is, is, uh, is not, uh, is, uh, the, the data is not enough for the training and some, uh, some data is, is labeled, but some data are not. Um, so can we use a meta learning to, uh, to learn the, the knowledge from a number of tasks and then transfer the, the knowledge into a new task. That, that is, um, can we try to uh, integrate meta learning algorithms into a graph new level algorithms? That is uh, one of the challenges as well. And, and if after we have a very good uh, efficient uh, embedding uh, algorithm and neural network algorithm, and how can we apply it to deal with a number of tasks in information retrieval and data mining is also challenging. For instance, how to apply um, the, the, the graph neural network algorithm for uh, no classification and for the link partitions in neural networks and how to um, profiling the, the nodes that is the users, for instance, in the network is challenging as well. And we all, sometimes we also need to consider the data as structure as network. Can we do some search information retrieval task? Can we improve the information retrieval task by uh, graph neural network, a uh, graph embedding algorithms? And, and can we detect a fake, fake news in the networks? We have a number of challenges in terms of the, the embedding algorithm and the applications. And here is the overview of my uh, today's seminar. And uh, that is, we just now we uh, discuss uh, different categories of networks. They are intellect network, a a high electrical networks, a direct network, and noise graph. And sometimes uh, the networks are dynamic, but not static. And then we will move to uh, the, the next part. That is, um, I would like to introduce uh, some models, some uh, embedding, some gra uh, graph, some graph uh, neural network embedding algorithms that was proposed in our lab. We, uh, have, uh, we, uh, uh, we have a number of work published in talk conference and journals, and they, the mo uh, they, they, are, they are about um, uh, uh, the, we propose uh, different uh, uh, embedding algorithms for the networks. I will detail them uh, later. And then we will talk about uh, the application of the graph embedding algorithms. So let's go to uh, the second part of today's seminar, the embedding, uh, the graph embedding, uh, the graph embedding algorithms. In our lab, we propose uh, a number of uh, uh, embedding uh, graph embedding algorithms. Now I, I would like to uh, walk, uh, I would like to, uh, to introduce them to all of you. And, and in the past few years, um, graph neural network algorithm mainly focused on infer one category of uh, entities only in the network. So in, uh, in wisdoms tools, in this, we have uh, papers accepted by wisdoms 2019, that paper tried to uh, do it differently. That is, um, uh, the, that is, we consider the problem in previous embedding algorithm. And the problem is, uh, one problem is um, the nose embedding is, uh, the, the uncertainty of nose embedding is equal nose. And another problem is, is then the embedding for nose only. They only try to enforce one kinds of uh, entities. That is the nodes only. So in this, in our wisdoms uh, 2019 paper, we uh, the input is a graph, a not uh, attribute graph, and no, each node is associated with attributes. And what we want to do here is we given a, a attributes network, and we try to enforce two categories of entities. That is the uh, the the nodes and the attributes. So we try to incumbent uh, the embeddings of uh, the nodes and the attributes into the same semantic space, such that the uh, semantic similarity between 
the nose and the attribute can be effectively measured. That is the framework of our, our model. You can see the, uh, the, the figures here. So here, we, the import G is uh, a graph. Each node is associated with attributes. And then we have two metrics. One is the metric, one is the, um, the, the, the link, the link metric uh, have the, the link information. Another is the, um, the attributes metric. They uh, have the attribute information. So we want to uh, map into the same space. You can see they share the same information. You could, we, uh, we use, uh, we, uh, we define uh, to, uh, to, uh, to deal with the problems, to, uh, to co-invest the nodes and the attribute into the same semantic space. We need to uh, define an objective function. That is uh, here, we have these uh, objectives. We have the joy, uh, joy uh, probability of the attribute, the attribute metric and the, and the link metric. So we use the uh, evaluational, evaluational autoencoder to infer to inverse the, the embedding of the nodes and the attribute into the same semantic space, given the, given the graph, given the attribute graph. And our assumptions here is um, the, um, the models, the embedding, the embedding of node and attribute into a normal distribution. So we have we have the mean and the covalence. The co covalence here is associated with the uncertainty. And to uh, to evaluate the performance of our proposed uh, um, co-embedding attribute neural algorithms, we uh, we did a number of experiments. We have a number of data sets. Uh, some uh, data set you can see uh, is very large, but some is a small data set with a small number of nodes and, and links and attributes. And here we have the link partition. That is, um, during the training, we remove some links. And for the testing, we try to predict the link, the link between the, the nodes. So as you can see in table three, our, our algorithm scan combating attribute network prefer the best. And also uh, to, uh, to further evaluate the performance of our proposed combating attribute network, we are uh, try we do some experiments for attributes inf influence. That is, um, we remove some attributes of the nodes during the training, and we try to predict, predict the nodes attributes uh, during the <laughs> testing. And here you can see uh, for uh, you can see our algorithm combating attribute never can prefer the best in terms of all the data sets. And for the node classification, and some nodes are labeled with uh, with uh, class information. And then we try to uh, predict uh, the, the 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 class label of some uh, nodes. And here we get some performance. And as you can see, the we have the we have the, we can see, as you can see, uh, can prefer the best. And this work uh, is public in wisdom. And we, if you are interested, we have the code. You can download the code. And also we have, uh, this year, we have a wisdom paper and entitled Learning Dynamic Embeddings for Template Knowledge Graph. Our assumptions in this paper is um, the knowledge graph the knowledge graphs are dynamic but not static. And given a sequential data of the graph, and the graph is a knowledge graph, but not the traditional graph. They have the they have the node, and between two nodes, we have the relationship. And that is um we have the node information and the relationship information. We have two information, two different categories of entities. And the nodes and the relationship. And we also suppose the, the, the knowledge graph are trained from time to time. They are dynamic. So given uh, our, our task is given uh, such dynamic uh, knowledge graph, can we infer uh, uh, the embedding of the nodes and the embedding of the, of the relationship for the next step? So one important uh, one important function is the transition the transitions function the, the transition the transition distribution. We have the 
observation in the last step. How can information, how can the embeddings of the nodes and the embedding of the relationship transfer from the last step to the current step? So we have we model it by a normal distribution. Actually, you can model it by other function, that's fine. And we uh, use uh, the nonlinear transition distribution. You can see here, although we model it by a normal distribution, but the menu is uh, modeled by a, a neural network f f function here. You can see, and this and this is the the objective, uh, the learning objective of our dynamic uh, knowledge graph. And here we have the we have the uh, the observation that is the sequential data of the of the temporal knowledge graph. And what we want to try to do is uh, try to try to infer the embeddings, the embedding of the nodes and the embedding of the relationship given the observation. I will not detail them. And here is the experimental results. We have a number of evaluation metrics to evaluate the performance. One is um, we try to uh, predict, try to predict the, the relationship, what kinds of relationship the two entities associate with. And here we we call it entity predictions. Entity is a relationship here, and we have two metrics. One is the mean rank, rank. Another metric is hits at ten, and the lower uh, mean length, the better, because um, given a note and, and another note, note. And if you we can, we can predict a length list of the relationship. If the correct uh, relationship a length a lower, and that will be fine. If it land by the top, and then we get a low score, and then the performance will be fine. Here you can see our, our algorithms, dynamic Bayesian knowledge graph embeddings online prefer the best. And we also have some uh, we also have some work. Uh, work uh, I have uh, some uh, I have a paper uh, just accepted by the uh, talk information retrieval journal. That is the twice journal, and this work. Uh, was done by one of my PhD students. And our goal here is try to um, uh, select a very uh, perfect uh, space to, um, to combat, to combat the, the embedding of nodes and attributes. And for some tasks, uh, for instance, here on, the, on the, your left hand side, we have the original distribution. And this distribution may not be a uh, model very well in Euclidean space. You can see the second figures. If we model into the Euclidean space, and that will be not uh, very well. And if we model into other space, for instance, hyperbolic space, they, they don't go very well as well. So we, um, we try to um, uh, map the original distribution of the data into a very a good uh, space. Uh, we try the hyper hi, hyperspherical space, and you can see if we map into the hyperspherical space, it prefer uh, better. And this is the main contribution of this work. And we try to we we try to analyze the distribution of the data and model the data into the into a good uh, distribution, a good space. So and this work is the contribution of this paper is mainly focused on uh, selecting a good uh, space to model the data. So uh, we here we also consider the network and we try to uh, combat the the nodes and the attribute into the same space. But the space here is not the Euclidean space. Instead, we try to map. The, the embedding of the nodes and the attribute into the uh, hyperspherical space. And we did a number of experiments to evaluate the performance of our proposed uh, hyper, hyperspherical uh, combining attribute network, HCAN, HCAN. And you can see we have the no classification performance. And you, if you look at the table at the bottom, we, you can see our performance. Uh, prefer our algorithm prefer the best compared to uh, other baselines. There, are, uh, there are model into different space. For instance, some model into the hyperbolic space, some model into the Euclidean space. Um, you can see our uh, model into different other space will not work very well. 
we also have the the uh, the attribution influence, and we remove some uh, attributes of the nodes and try to predict the the, the attributes of the nodes, and we uh, made the comparison to the baselines. As you can see, uh, in terms of attribution influence, we we get the best performance. That means um, modeling the data into the hyperspherical space prefer the best. And we also uh, did a num uh, did uh, an experiment that is uh, we try to profile the nodes, try to uh, get the get the uh, try to profile the users. We have, for instance, we use a data set, the DBLP uh, academic data set. In such data set, um, if uh, two uh, you two two uh, scholars uh, publish a uh, say papers, then they will have a link, and we. And that is a, a, a network, academic network. And given some, um, some uh, information, some attributes of the nodes, we try to profile a, a, a scholar in the network. So we uh, map, map the, the nodes in, into the hyperspherical space. And then we get the, the, the performance here. We can, see, uh, we can see they distribute very well. And we also in our lab, we, uh, working with my PhD student, we just uh, submit a paper in NIPS uh, this year. And we uh, in this paper, we try to um, embedding, we try to embed the, the nodes in hierarchical uh, structure, hierarchical structures. That is, we have these two. We try to uh, uh, inverse the embedding of the nodes in the hierarchical network. Here to uh, preserve, preserve the, the structure of the two, we made two constraints. One is the parent constraint, another is the broader constraint. In the parent constraint, we hold that, we made the assumptions that the distance between this node to uh, his parents should be larger than the distance to uh, the distance between this node to uh, his, uh, his children. The, the, that is the the required uh, parent constraint. And then we have the broader constraint that is, if uh, two nodes share the same parent, then distance should be smaller than, uh, than the, the, the two nodes who share the same uh, grand parent. So we may such a, such a constraint such that we, um, we can uh, do link uh, influence, do link uh, in the influence of the, the node embedding, we can uh, preserve the structure the hierarchical structure of the network. And when a contribution of this work is, um, we try to map uh, the, the embedding of the node into the complex, uh, in, uh, in complex space. And, and that is we have given a node, we try to have the latest vector and the ankle vector. And by doing so, uh, we, can, um, we can preserve the structure of the network and also, it's very easy for us to transfer the uh, complex embedding into the Euclidean embedding. It's very easy for us to do that. And we also have uh, to, uh, to evaluate the performance of our hierarchical embedding algorithms. We did a number of uh, experiments. One is um, try to reconstruct the, the, the two structures of the network. Here we have a number of uh, hierarchical uh, embedding baselines. Some are modeled into a different space, such as the point cap space. And here you can see from table one and our, our algorithm H hierarchical uh, complex never embedding H, C, and E prefer the best. And, and then we also uh, uh, try to evaluate, the, made the comparison in terms of the node classification for high electric. There is, uh, you can see in table two, and the, we have four data sets. In almost all the data sets, our algorithm prefer the best in terms of the node classification. And this year, uh, last month, we just have a paper accepted by the KDD conference. And entitled Gaussian process with graph convolutional kernel for rational learning. And the contribution of this paper is to propose a effective 
a kernel function uh, for the influence of the uh, graph embedding. And our contribution here, if you look at the, the figure, and here is the, we propose a really good uh, base kernel function, and we try to map the features into a more efficient uh, features. And then we use a graph, uh, graph embeddings algorithms to further get the final embedding of the node and the attribute. That is the main contribution of our KDD conference paper. And actually, um, in, the, in, a, in, in the past couple of years, we have a number of uh, kernel functions has been proposed by researchers, such as RBF, uh, uh, RBF um, uh, 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 kernel function. And but all of these kernel functions have a number of limitations. I summarize uh, these kernel function into uh, three approaches. Uh, approach one, the kernel function try to uh, compo compose a uh, the, the, fir the first approach uh, proposed to compose the standard kernels to form a complex kernel function. But uh, by doing so, and the, the processing time is too long and it's not really good to uh, use, uh, uh, the, to combine the standard kernel because we have uh, too, too many parameters to be turned during the training. And approach two, uh, we can incorporate and new neural structures in kernels. And these kernel functions are still a feature base. And this kernel, uh, this approach ignores the structure of the data because in the network, we have the structures. We, uh, the nodes not only have features, but also have structures. They have neighbors, right? And then we have the search, the search approach. And for instance, the search approach, they are structure based a kernel function but uh, for instance, uh, the, the structure based uh, library uh, kernels. But this uh, kernel function um, um, ignores the features of the objective, it ignores the rich feature of the nodes, and although they consider the structures. So in our KDD paper, we try to uh, propose a new kernel function that is that consider uh, two stuff. One is uh, the feature. Another is the structure of the node. So if you can look at the first equation and we, we define a, a kernel uh, with parameter theta, and we try to uh, map the two uh, nodes, xi and xj into the same space. But here, instead of directly um, map them into the, uh, uh, the graph convolutional uh, embedding algorithm, we try to use um, a, a kernel, a kernel function here. You can see we have a capital G. Capital G here try to combine two things. One is the, the feature of the node. Another is uh, the structure of the node. So you can see um, a G X I here we have X itself. That is the feature of the node. And we also consider the, the, uh, the nodes uh, neighborhoods. That is, if you can look at the, the equations on your right hand side, and we can see it, we consider the our hub neighborhoods, our hub neighborhood. That means our kernel function consider two stuff. One is the feature of the nodes, another is the the neighborhoods, the structure of the feature uh, of the the nodes. So we try to uh, consider the feature and the structure of the node. And then we uh, we combine these two information into the kernel function. After uh, we map the feature and the structure into the space, and then we use the graph convolutional uh, neural network algorithm to get the final embedding of the of the nodes. That is the main contribution of the paper. But uh, for more information, you can go. You, you can ask me for the uh, to ask me to get the paper. And here we have the, the, the experiments results. And here we have the link partition experiments. And to, uh, to, uh, to understand if our kernel function work well, we make a number of baseline with uh, different kernel functions. And our, our algorithm is GPGC, a Gaussian process with Gaussian, uh, Gaussian convolutional kernel. 
as uh, some uh, baseline uh, occurs with um, the with other uh, kernel functions such as um, uh, this our peak uh, kernel function or other kernel function. As you can see, um, our kernel function was the best in terms of the link partition. And we also uh, try to uh, uh, do some experiments to understand uh, if our kernel function was the best. We, 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 uh, we uh, did experiment in terms of the semi-supervised no classification. And here we have three data sets, three data set. Each data set, for instance, COLA data set, we have more than 2,000 nodes and we have seven classes. And, and R, capital R means is the rate of the, of the label, about 5.2% of the nodes are labeled. And other uh, data set, have, for instance, the second data set, we have more than 3,000 nodes. And you can see that this table, um, our, our algorithm GPGC prefer the best in terms of the semi-supervised node classification uh, with different uh, uh, label, really label rate. Here is the label rate. And uh, in the in last month, we just submit a paper to the NIPS conference. And we are uh, working with my PhD student. We submit a paper entitled Relational Continual Bayesian Meta Learning. Our assumptions made in this paper is um, as some tasks, we don't have enough data. So how can we do, how can we deal with such tasks? So what we can do is uh, try to uh, combine, try to learn some uh, shared knowledge from existing tasks. Uh, try to learn the shared experience from the existing tasks. Uh, these existing tasks are associated with uh, some uh, network information, network, stock, network data, for instance. Here we have, in this paper, we also consider uh, the task, the task, the, the text task is dynamic, not static. So we have the, we have a number of uh, tasks in, in the data set. We try to learn the shared knowledge in in the networks, and then use the share information, the knowledge to uh, to make the partitions in the text in the in in the in the partition task. This is our main goal, and the main goal of our paper. In this paper, we define um, for each uh, for each uh, task in the in the in the uh, task uh, in the in the learning data sets. We have. Uh, There's some network problem. <clears throat> of uh, data from a uh, tie step one to the current tie step T. We have this uh, uh, temporal, uh, uh, temporal uh, network. We try to learn the, the shared knowledge T, the shared knowledge, the shared uh, knowledge T. And we try to use this shared knowledge to uh, make the uh, the position for the new task. Here we uh, decompose it into uh, these equations. And if you can look at the second line of the equations, and here we have, uh, we decompose uh, with different tasks. Each task will, it will be associated with uh, kilometers phi t, phi t. And if you can look at the last line of the equation here, and um, we, for the shared information, we suppose we have the, the topic information. So um, we, we suppose some tasks are similar, so we cluster the, the training tasks, uh, some training tasks have the same pattern together. And then we use this information to boost the performance. So we, in the last line of the equation, we introduce a one available ZT here. That is uh, the, 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 the topic of the, the shared knowledge. So to uh, to uh, to understand if our 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 meta learning algorithm meta learning combat meta learning uh, embedding algorithm were well or not, we did a number of experiments. Uh, for for instance, we have the no classification we uh, class no classification task. Given a number of tasks, each task is associated with our uh, a network. 
and then we try to learn the shared information from all the tasks, all the uh, networks. And given a new, uh, uh, after the learning, after the meta, -learn meta learning, we get the shared information. We transfer the shared information into the testing uh, a no classification task. And then we get the performance. As we can see, the last line at table one is our algorithm. And here you can see our, in most case, in most uh, data set, we have the best uh, node classification performance. And just now I we have talked about the, the, the uh, embeddings algorithms we propose in our lab. And next, let's move to uh, the application of uh, uh, embed, uh, a graph embedding algorithms. Actually, uh, in in just now, I have to, I have told to you a number of applications, but here we uh, I would like to uh, talk about more applications of uh, embedding algorithms. And here, uh, uh, last uh, two thousand nineteen, we have a next paper uh, uh, with my uh, PhD student, and here is we consider uh, the semi supervised combining HP network. The assumptions here is um, we have a network, but uh, not all the nodes are, lab are labeled. Some only with a small number of nodes are labeled. So can we infer the embeddings of the of the node and also the label of the node together? We consider a number of structures such as hierarchical uh, network and the and the uh, node graph. And the input is a, a, a graph uh, with, a, with a small number of nodes with labels. And the output is try to uh, enforce the, the, the embedding of the nodes and the embedding of the attribute and the label of the nodes. And also, and, uh, last week, we just had a paper with many revision in, uh, in the uh, data mining top journals, that is TKD. And in this paper, we try to uh, do uh, some uh, network partition task. That is uh, given, given a network uh, choice from time to time. So can we predict, so can we predict if the two nodes across different time step uh, have the same ID? For instance, some nodes, uh, user one, they have the same ID, we know that, but, uh, but, the, but some nodes, uh, they change the names can we uh, predict if they are still the same person? That is the, uh, we call it a uh, never arrangement. And what we need to do in this paper is we need to, uh, to uh, embedding, we need to get the embedding of the nodes uh, from time to time. We need to um, check, check the embedding of the, of the nodes across the time steps. And in terms of uh, never partitions uh, applications, and what we want to do in our lab is um, just now we uh, we just uh, uh, showed our, our our work in TKD, but uh, we are planning to do a number of applications of the uh, of the network embedding algorithm. One is to try to predict uh, uh, how many nodes will be added into the network at a specific time in point, and how and and try to predict if the two nodes will have a link or not in the future. And that is the new link partition. And we try to understand if there are some nodes uh, will be updated uh, after a couple of days, for instance. And that is, uh, we try to predict the attribute, how the, the attribute of the nodes change from time to time. And what we want to do in the future there is try to um, understand how the link update, how the link change from time to time. That is what we want to do to address the, this, this, uh, this task. We need to uh, propose a very effective uh, uh, temporal uh, knowledge graph embedding algorithms, try to uh, deal with this uh, problem. And Actually, we um, we are also uh, uh, the application of the com uh, the graph embedding algorithm is uh, profiling users expertise in a network. For instance, we have an academic network. Each uh, each 
scholars in the in the in the network will uh, publish some paper. So can we use uh, the the paper published by the scholars to um to automatically profile the scholars expertise? It's a very good application. And but the problem is uh, how to uh, find a good uh, space, a uh, semantic space to model such data. And different networks should be associated with different uh, semantic space. In our although in our paper we we have mapped the scholars uh, a note into the hyperbolic uh, space. But are there any other uh, more effective space can be uh, models uh, such data? There is a very good application of the uh, of the uh, profiling as well. And and when uh, another application of the uh, uh, graph embedding is a uh, personal product search, uh, when you go online shopping, you need to um, input some uh, some word keywords. To, uh, you want to uh, search some products. For instance, here you uh, input Apple. You try maybe you try to uh, get a long list of products associated with the keyword Apple. But uh, traditionally, in information retrieval, uh, uh, in information retrieval task, they don't consider the data are uh, network. They just uh, consider um, the description of the products, and they they they, they assume the data are independent. Actually, uh, some products uh, are associated with each other. For instance, this this user uh, purchase this product, and another uh, products. Uh, is purchased by this user as well. So uh, these two uh, pro products will share the say uh, we have the uh, link between them. So can we use uh, the network to to improve the performance of personal product search? That is a very good application of the uh, graph embedding algorithms. And also we can uh, we consider a really uh, a general uh, task in information retrieval. There is a, a personalized verb search. In personalized verb search, given a, a, a query, given a input, for instance, you use a, a Google, you input a keywords, you try to get a relevant documents. For instance, uh, these four documents are relevant to the input uh, queries, but different user will have, we suppose, uh, we, for instance, this user uh, he believes uh, the first, the second documents are relevant to his search intent. A different user will have different search intent, although all the, the four documents are relevant to the to the input uh, queries. But uh, if you look at the the queries, uh, history of the user, some user is interested in a uh, small part of the relevant documents. So, um, but uh, traditionally, uh, in information retrieval. Uh, they suppose the document are independent. Actually, they uh, the documents uh, they have the link, they have the connection, they have the relations uh, between each other. For instance, this document linked to this web page, linked to another web page. They uh, they form a a, a, net, a network. And also, uh, some user uh, they have the network as well. So, can we use uh, the network? Can we? Infers the embedding of the user, the embedding of the net, uh, of the documents to improve the performance of personalized web search is a uh, one uh, important information retrieval application uh, when you uh, 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 for uh, uh, for the graph uh, embedding algorithms. And also, so, um, in data mining, we have a lot of words on uh, question answering communities. There is a uh, given uh, questions. We try to uh, rank the relevant answers. The, the more relevant the answers, the higher ranking the answer will be. But the problem is um, in traditional uh, uh, question uh, uh, answer ranking uh, task. The problem is um, they suppose the answer they, they don't have. They suppose the answer is, uh, are independent to each other. So can we uh, consider uh, they are a networks? For instance. If two uh, users answer the same questions, maybe the two users will have a link, and then we will have a network. So can we use such network to improve the performance of many tasks in question answering communities? There will be a very important application of uh, uh, graph 
uh, embedding algorithms. And lastly, I would like to uh, talk about the the application that is uh, try to detect the face news in the network. Uh, some people write uh, so messages and then he post post the so messages by Twitter or Facebook, and then other, other people will really test the the, the so messages. So can we uh, text? Uh, can we detect if the news is fake or not? And then uh, the, the transformation of the news. Uh, it actually is a network. Can we uh, use the network uh, structure of the, the news to predict if the news is fake, fake, fake news or not? That is a very important uh, application of the embedding, uh, the graph embedding application as well. So just now I talk about the application of the uh, graph uh, embedding algorithms and and now let's go to our conclusion. In today's uh, seminar, we talk about uh, uh, three, three main uh, aspects. One is, uh, one is um, different uh, categories of the networks. We have, for instance, a direct network, a direct network, hierarchical network, and knowledge graph. And then we uh, talk about um, a number of uh, embedding, uh, graph embedding algorithms that was proposed in our lab. Uh, uh, they are combining the attribute network algorithms, dynamic uh, embedding, uh, graph embedding algorithm. And we, try, we have some paper uh, talking about uh, 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 build the graph embedding model into a, a really good space, how to uh, select a good space. And then we have the meta learning for a graph uh, embedding algorithms. And then we uh, have some work on um, uh, selecting a good uh, kernel functions in the knowledge graph. And then we talk a, li a little bit about the application of the graph embedding algorithm. Uh, they are classification, uh, prediction, uh, face fake news uh, detection, and information retrieval and question answering uh, communities task. And for the future of work, uh, I believe there are still other types of network. And for instance, um, the dynamic uh, DLX network, the dynamic hierarchical network. So how to uh, uh, deal with such kinds of network is, is, is challenging. Uh, traditional uh, uh, embedding algorithm may not work very well to deal with uh, these new uh, types of networks. And another challenge is uh, future work uh, should be um, we can propose some more effective and efficient and uh, never embedding algorithms to deal with a number of tasks. And some people have proposed uh, some tasks, uh, some algorithms to deal with the task. Our question is, um, can we uh, propose more effective, more efficient uh, never embedding algorithms for specific tasks? That is the, uh, the future work. And lastly, the, the final future uh, work should be the application of the networks. And some, uh, we have a number of tasks in information retrieval and data mining. And most of the tasks, most of the tasks are deal with, uh, uh, deal with traditional uh, 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 data mining and information algorithms. So can we try to uh, model the data into the network and try to propose a new uh, network algorithm embedding algorithm to deal with the application, that, that is our future work as well. And thanks for, the, for your time. And that is the end of my seminar. If you have any questions, I would like to uh, answer them. Thanks. Thank you very much for the talk, a very interesting one. So actually I saw that you used both for graph neural net and in some graphical model as well. Uh, can you say something about you know, the graphical model approach you use. People often say graphical model is not very scalable, right? Large scale problems. Are you using some variational inference approach or something like that in your graphical model formulation earlier? Uh, very good questions. Uh, I, I agree with you and some, uh, we have uh, some graphs are very large and uh, some uh, inference uh, algorithm is not really uh, scalable enough to, to do the inference. 
actually um uh, down uh, in uh in uh in new neural uh, uh embedding algorithms uh, to do the influence people uh, usually uh, have uh, two uh technologies one is the em algorithms another is the valuation influence and uh, there are some uh, paper uh, try to uh, boost the if the efficiency of the influence but uh, yes i i, I believe uh, these are good lessons and uh, given the say a uh, task given the say task the say algorithms uh, how to uh, boost the efficiency of the influence there will be a uh, future work i i believe uh, this is is a good uh, direction. Thanks. Right. So uh, actually, there's another uh, question I have. So you mentioned about lots of application on a social network. Uh, have you thought about application, for instance, of a graph neural to smart city related problem or maybe sustainability related problems? Um, yes, yeah, we, uh, we are concerned, uh, for instance, uh, um, um, uh, the application of the, uh, the, the smart city uh, using the graph uh, data. For instance, we, we made the bookings, uh, text bookings, and we have the, we have the, uh, the, the map and we, as, uh, and we have the users to uh, book the, the text on different location and of the city. So can we uh, use such uh, a data to predict, uh, for instance, uh, at which uh, location, at what time will this user will uh, make a, a booking of uh, a, a taxi? That, that, that is an interesting uh, research question as well. I, I believe um, the, the graph uh, never embedding algorithm can, um, can improve the, the performance of using uh, the the smart city uh, uh, data, and yeah, I, I I think it's a very good application uh, in terms of uh, smart cities. Uh, thanks. Uh, another question related to this is uh, where often graph are also used to represent. Uh, you already mentioned the knowledge graph, right? And have you considered, for instance, using the graph and graph neural net as a tool to uh, perform logic reasoning or maybe use it in scenarios such as question answering or multimodal data uh, understanding or analysis? And uh, yeah, we are thinking about um, uh, using the, uh, not, uh, the, the, the graph, the, uh, the graph embedding algorithm to uh, deal with a number of tasks in question answering, for instance, and we try to um, uh, predict the the best answer to uh, to our questions, and before we doing that, we need to uh, construct a really good uh, a network. Uh, we use the we have the core of the uh, question and the answer. We uh, how can we construct a good uh, network? For instance, uh, if uh, two uh, users uh, uh, answer the same questions, they may share the link between these two users, and if um, uh, uh, yeah, and we also we can also consider uh, the 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 expertise of the user will change from time to time, and we have the dynamic network uh, by constructing uh, such data data. So uh, we can use such a uh, 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 networks to improve the 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 literature of the best answer to the questions, and and we also uh, we can consider uh, using uh, the graph embedding algorithm to to, um, to uh, for instance, to recommend the best uh, users to answer the question, who have, uh, our question is, uh, who have the, the, the best expertise to answer uh, such questions? We can recommend such uh, uh, users to, uh, to answer these questions. And I believe, yeah, a uh, uh, graph embedding algorithm can uh, boost the performance of uh, many tasks in uh, question answering communities such a task yeah thanks okay any other questions from the audience yeah there's a faculty meeting session uh, just following this and some of the faculty may have some question they will ask you directly in that session okay and okay then, 
now it looks like uh, we have all the questions and uh, thank you very much again for the interesting talk and yeah uh, thank you right see thank you. you thank you all of you see you bye, bye.